WTIV Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Remembering Ernie. Thousands of fans are flocking to Comerica Park to pay final tribute to the broadcasting legend. These are live pictures from Sky 4. And true to Ernie's selfless spirit that always put others first, we've learned that Harwell actually helped set up today's emotional memorial service. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Local 4 News at 5, and thanks for joining us. Our Devin Scullion is live at Comerica Park. It's been quite a day out there, Devin. Really has been, Carmen. We're watching quite a remarkable event uh, unfold here at Comerica Park. Ever since 7 o'clock this morning, uh, there's been a steady line of uh, people who wanted to be here to pay tribute to somebody that many of them didn't know, had never met, but they felt that they knew him so personally. It's been said that the measure of man is how he treats others. Well, you can see today uh, the measure of Ernie Harwell. So many people who believe that he treated them so well and with so much respect, kindness, and love over the years. Uh, let's show you a shot from Sky four here as you can we can show you that uh, uh, this has really been the way it's looked almost all day there's this long line snaking its way around Comerica Park we've talked to people coming from uh, not just all over southeast Michigan but from all over the state uh, we heard earlier from a man who came uh, from Traverse City felt that he just had to be here today uh, to be a part of this of course they're making their way past his casket inside and uh, I want to show you this card that we've set out here today. We had to bring in reinforcements. This is the card that Local 4 uh, put out for people to sign today. We started with these over here on the far side. Those quickly filled up, and we've now added another, uh, let's see, four panels, and uh, those are just about full, too. We may need a few others out here before midnight uh, comes along. But so many of these stories uh, that you see here, uh, so they may look a little bit generic. Some of them are terribly personal, and that's the secret here to the love affair that Michiganders have had with Ernie Harwell. Everybody felt that they knew him personally. Our Roger Weber spent the day talking with the fans who've been uh, coming here. Let's get over to Roger for some of their stories. Roger? Uh, it's such an important day for all of them to be here, uh, Devin. Let's take another look at that line uh, going from the north, uh, or rather the west side of the stadium, around to the north side. They tell me it is about a half hour wait. As you go inside, of course, your eyes are drawn to Ernie Harwell and the, the beautiful display around him. But I had to look at the faces of all those people going by. Uh, a woman blows a kiss. A man makes the sign of a cross. Another man tips a hat with an English D to his hero. It's unbelievable that he's that he's gone. Ernie's fans cherished his values as well as his voice. They would not have missed the chance to shed some tears and say goodbye. Listen to him ever since I was a little guy. I am the kid. I am the kid with the tra transistor radio under my pillow. He just kept on teaching us by example. He lay in repose next to his statue. Photographs flanked the casket where an American flag honored this former Marine. And I didn't know Ernie was a Marine, and, uh, and I had to take my hat off when I seen that. The man who was so generous signing autographs now received a personal message from a fan and a cross of flowers. Uh, he's a God-fearing man, and uh, I think that's one of the ties that uh, brought me down. He was always good to me, and he was always good to the city. A man of his word, somebody you count on. What, what is it about the man that's touched you so much? He was just a great person. <laughs> just a wonderful human being. Yeah, the voice of summer on my radio. He's a voice of summer. Summer. Ernie Harwell did not want a public memorial because he didn't want to put his wife Lulu through that. He helped plan uh, today, and it has been the perfect farewell. Devin, back to you. And in fact, uh, we've uh, obviously been focusing so much on the stories of people's childhoods growing up with Ernie, but it also has been allowing us, Roger, to think more about Ernie's growing up and his childhood, too. One of the stories I love was he's a kid, he's uh, cheering for the Atlanta Crackers, the baseball team down in Atlanta. The Yankees are at spring training. They come up to play an exhibition game. Ernie uh, sees Babe Ruth coming into the dugout. He positions himself to get an autograph. He says, Mr. Ruth, can I have your autograph? Babe Ruth says, kid, I've got nothing to sign. Ernie puts his shoe up. The Babe signs it. Well, what happened to that shoe and that autograph? 
They just faded away and were thrown away because Ernie only had one pair of shoes. <laughs> Isn't that something? And that just yeah. tells you the connective tissue here that Ernie provides to this marvelous right. game uh, that he crossed paths with the likes of Babe Ruth. In fact, by the way, Ernie once told me uh, Babe Ruth was his favorite player, but the greatest player that he ever watched play was Willie Mays. Just a little something to stow away. All right, Roger, yeah. we'll talk to you again in a little yeah. bit. Uh, speaking of, uh, of Ernie, you know, I remember talking to him just as he was retiring from broadcasting in 2002. And I asked him what all the outpouring felt like to him at that time, that all the attention he was getting, the statue here at Comerica. He said, frankly, he was a little embarrassed by it all. Well, how would he feel about today uh, to watch what's going on at Comerica? And yet, as we've mentioned, Ernie had a hand in deciding what today was going to be like. This does not happen on game days. A major league team GM personally welcoming fans to Comerica. Dave Dombrowski admits this wasn't part of the original plan. Instead, it was a last minute decision that just felt right. People are coming into our home. But everything else you see here was meticulously planned by Dombrowski, by Mike Illich, and by Ernie himself, right down to where the coffin is placed. Dombrowski remembers that emotional planning day. I was so touched. I, I came home and I remember telling my wife, I said, it just shows you how it, at peace Ernie Harwell is for somebody to sit and be able to talk about their death and their next life and to, to laugh and to tell stories and plan details. Back in September, Ernie was diagnosed with inoperable cancer. He knew the end was near, and Ernie continued to greet life with a warm embrace. Basically, Ernie had an involvement in, in all of this. As people from across the state say their final farewells, Dombrowski says the message is the same. They basically they continued to tell me just how special he was to them in their lives. A broadcaster who became something more to the millions who listen, the voice of summer. And for that reason, of course, people still continue to come here down to Comerica Park. We'll take another shot here of the, uh, of the sympathy cards that we've placed out here that people continue to put their own memories, their own stamp on, uh, their own thoughts, uh, just reading them over. Keep broadcasting for the Angels. We'll be listening. God bless from Hal, 68 fan, it says. Ernie, you'll always be the voice of the Tigers. God bless you. God bless Detroit with Ernie. Thanks for everything. So we'll continue to watch uh, the scene unfold here at Comerica. By the way, if you are planning on coming down, uh, they will stop the line at midnight. If you're already in line at midnight, they will then allow you to come on in and uh, pass through to pay your respects. But you do need to be in line uh, by midnight. Carmen, back to you. All right, and that may be good news for those who are probably deciding now that they want to come. Thank you, Devin. Exactly if right. You, if